inside is Deuces Jack at Vaping Insider. Today, we're going to be going over the Vapex Geyser. Look at that funkadelic looking 21700 pod system. Yeah, man. It's kind of funky looking, huh? Kind of looks like an old radio or something like that. Almost like an old walkie talkie, right? <laughs> Before we get into the video, click the link down below in the top comment in order to join our Facebook group. We're gonna check out the packaging on this. And you guys know I really don't spend a lot of time on the packaging unless it's really nice, but they did a bang up job on this. Look at the way this thing opens up. Look at the way they lay everything out. It even comes with a 21700 battery. I mean, what a bang up job they did on this. Now, you'll notice here it says there's gonna be a 510 adapter and a dual uh, coil RDTA for it as well, all right? And then they list the coils over here. But bang up job, bang up job on the packaging, man. Really, really nice job. You open it up, the presentation is just beautiful. I mean, look at that packaging. Nice, nice job. I can't say it enough. I'm kind of digging this 18650 adapter. Kind of cool that it's like rubbery and not hard. I think they did a nice job on that. You also get these airflow rings that I'm going to show you in more detail in a second. You get two coils in the kit that we're going to go over in more detail. You also get two pods, and then you get the mod with another pod installed. You also get this really nice and long flat type C cable. I'm digging that for sure. And you get these tools right here that I'll show you how to use as well. First things first, let me show you the coils. Look at the difference in the coils. This one belongs in one tank, the, the tank that was on the side. This one goes in the tank that was pre-installed. Let's go over the small one first. You can see it says X coil, all right? This is what I really like, what they did, man. 35 to 45 watts, 0.2 ohm, canthal, very clearly marked on the coil. Absolutely love that. You can see it's mesh inside. Now, on the coil that is significantly bigger, you can see 50 to 75 watts, 0.2 ohm canthal. I like the purple O-rings. I'm definitely digging that. You can see this is mesh inside as well. We're going to try the big boy coil out first. All right, so this is the pod that takes the smaller coil, all right? You can see different drip tip. It's that sleeve style drip tip. Again, digging those purple O-rings, but it's a proprietary drip tip. Not too happy about that, all right? Also not happy about how dark, how dark is this pod? I mean, ridiculously dark, really, really is. Now, I'm going to show you how to fill it up, but I'll show you how to fill it up when it's on the mod because it's actually a lot easier, okay? Now, plug-and-play style coil. You can see you got those, like, that, like, rail. See those two square pieces there, right? So those square pieces are going to line up with those square plastic pieces, and then you just push it in. And it seems like a really nice, tight fit. Now, they also give you this little mini, like, crowbar so you can take your coil out with ease because it's kind of tough to get your fingers in there, all right? So that's a nice job. I mean, you could use anything, but it's nice that they gave you a little tool that pops it out like that. Let's me know that they're thinking about details. I like to see stuff like that by companies, okay? Now, here's your airflow right here, right? Now, when it's on the bottom, it's basically fully open, right? When you turn it, you flip this thing to turn it, right? And you turn it all the way to the top, that's basically your tightest setting right there, okay? That is your tightest setting. So, you know, halfway would be probably middle of the road right there like that. Kind of digging that honeycomb, that cheese grater style look. Not a bad job on that whatsoever. Now, the other thing is, right, while I got this pod out, and you can do this with both pods, okay, you get these other airflow rings, and you see that one little slot right there? That's all your airflow as opposed to all this, okay? Now, they give you another tool right here, this little, I guess it's a star screw, right? And all you do is you just pop this little screw out, okay? And now you can pop this ring off just like so, right? And now you can pop this on. Okay, 
and you take your little screw, put it back in there, and just tighten it down. And now you got airflow. You got a different type of airflow. Kind of cool. Don't know if that's really going to be my jam right there. Um, I might reverse it on both of them and see how it works. In fact, let's do that. Let's take this one off as well, and let's uh, see how it works with the airflow inserts. All right? Again, very simple. Let's pull these screws out. Pop that piece off. Pop this piece on. Screw back in there just like that. Get your included tool. Give that screw a twist. And voila. Different airflow installed. And you still got this piece right here where you can adjust it. Okay? So we're going to keep that installed just like that. And I'll fill this tank up later and I'll let you know how it vapes with the other airflow installed. And the other thing I like about the airflow is, you see, if you're a thumb firer, right, you're going to be covering part of the airflow there. So what you can do is you can overcompensate for it on one side, right? And the same thing if you're a trigger finger firer, right? You're going to be covering the airflow there. So you could compensate for it on this side. It's kind of cool the way they did that. Not a bad idea. You know, I mean, just a really, really nice job. I, and I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if you can see my finger through there. The airflow is kind of wide open when it's on the bottom. I mean, it's pretty airy. So nice job on the airflow design. Definitely something different. Let's go over to the second pod, all right? We're going to start off on top as usual. Again, proprietary drip tip. Definitely a wider bore, all right? That's why I put the other airflow on the other tank, okay? Now here's something interesting, okay? This is a dual switch here, okay? Basically, do the back part of the switch and it releases the pod, all right? Do the front part of the switch, push it forward, and it releases the fill port, okay? Or the fill top cap, whatever you want to call it, all right? Now, you have two places that you can fill from right here. The problem is this pod is so dark, very easy to overfill on. I wish they would have made this a lot clearer, especially considering the fact that a black piece is covering it, right? At the very least, I got to be able to see my juice level when I'm filling it. So that's a big problem. I wish they would have thought that through a little bit more. All right. But what are you going to do? Those are the cards that we were dealt. I do like this spring loaded, you know, it's really not. It's spring loaded after it does the initial release. It doesn't pop out. But once you unlock it, it stays out of your way. I kind of like that. There's the spring right there. You could see. Okay. Nice job. Just make sure when you click this down you really snap it into place. Otherwise, you're going to wind up losing pressure in the tank, okay? So let's release the tank. Pop it out just like that, all right? Now check out what you got going on here, okay? You got two screws, three uh, gold-plated pins right there. They are going to fire your coil. Nice, nice way they did that, man. They did a nice job on the inside there. That's a metal latch right there. I like the way they did that. Nice job on that. So let's go over the pod that houses the bigger coil, okay? Same type of airflow as I showed you on the other one, all right? Just a bigger opening for your coil, all right? And a different drip tip. Now, again, when you're installing this coil, make sure those flat sides line up with the plastic flat sides and just pop it in there, man. Just pop it in there nice and easy, okay? And I would suggest, you know, the best way to fill this thing is to definitely put it on the mod, all right, and fill it up that way, okay? Juice we're going to be using today is Johnny's Juice Havana Hooker. Great summer vape. Go check it out. So now in order to fill this thing up, put your juice nozzle in there, give it a squeeze, all right, and just be careful because, like I said, it's dark and it's very, very hard to see your juice level. I mean, it's almost impossible. You'd have to hold this up to a really bright light, in order to see your juice level. So just be very, very careful. Okay? That's all I'm telling you. It's one of the big cons on this device. I don't know why they made this pod so dark. And there you go. Did you see it come out there? There you go. That's the problem. So once you got it all cleaned up and wiped down, just make sure it clicks into place. I wish this had a more satisfying click 
so I know it's in place, but you can give it a test and make sure it definitely is in place, okay? You also have this right here, I guess for a lanyard or something, right? I, I don't know who would want to hang this heavy mod around their neck, but I guess people do. Now, let's take a look at the mod. Very aesthetically pleasing. I wish they would have relocated that somewhere, like maybe somewhere in the corner here. It just looks like it's in the middle of nowhere, that Type-C port. I wish they would have put it here or something, all right? Um, made out of plastic and metal. There are plastic parts and metal parts on it, okay? There's your fire button right there. It's kind of, if you look at it, it's kind of like a trigger-style fire button. There is your screen right there, up and down buttons, some Vapex branding right there, okay? Now, here's the interesting thing, right? On the bottom, you would think you'd have a slider here for the battery. No, you don't. You don't. Let me show you how this battery door works. And let me show you the surprise when I open it. Pop it down just like that. And look at that. Look at that, huh? It comes with a 21700 battery pre-installed. Now, is it the best 21700 battery? I don't know. Is it Mooch approved? Definitely not. I don't think so. But you just pull that plastic tab out of there because that stops it from firing. And you can run all your other 21700s in it as well. Okay, so it's a nice job that they include one. All right, I like that a lot. Definitely, definitely impressed by that. Now, look at this. Clear battery indicator markings in blue and red. Beautiful, beautiful job on the clear battery markings. Okay, lets me know that this company is listening to reviews. Button gold-plated style contact on the bottom. Spring-loaded gold-plated battery contact on the top. All right. Follow the battery markings, put it in top first, and just slide it in just like that. Now, here's the nice thing about this battery door as well. And I don't know if you're seeing this. You see these little teeth right here? It's got like these little teeth, like a rail system with teeth. And when you slide that battery door up, right, it just snaps into place. You hear that? You hear that? Listen again. I like that. I like that click. Great battery door, bang up job on that Vapex. All right. Five clicks, you get the Vapex splash screen. Now, the funny thing is, when I first saw this screen, I was like, wow, that screen looks familiar. It looks very much like the Geek Vape chipset. All right. You can see it scrolls in 0.1 watt increments, does scroll pretty fast, all the way up to 100 watts. It does round robin. Okay. Now, as far as the screen goes, you got your power mode, wattage. Those are your battery bars right there. You can see I have three out of six. There's your resistance, your amps, your volts, and your puffs. Okay, nice job on the screen. It's nice and bright. All right, now if you hit the button three times, saw power highlighted. All right, TCNI, SS, TI, TCR. There's your curve mode. There's your bypass mode. Back to power mode. Hit the power button again, and you can see I can lock my resistance by the coil there for when I'm in TC. Hit it again, and there I can clear my puffs. All right, so nice job on that. I'm back in power mode now. If I hit the plus and minus button together, it locks the mod. When it locks the mod, it means I can't adjust the wattage up or down, but I can still fire it, okay? Hit plus and minus again and it unlocks the mod, all right? Hit the plus and fire button together, and now I can decrease or increase my screen brightness, but you have to keep your finger on the fire button. And that's it, folks. That's really the whole menu system. Let me show you one last look around the mod, all right? Let's go back on top, and let's vape on it and see how it performs. Let's go over those cons and pros we got a ton of stuff to go over on both sides. First con's gonna be, you guys know I hate it, proprietary drip dip, big no-no Vapex. Filling this thing. Filling this thing is very, very messy. You cannot see your juice level on it. Added to that, I don't know how well of a seal that that cap actually makes because I've been leaking through the airflow like a sieve, like a sieve. Every time I pick this thing up, I get a handful of juice. 
it's annoying as hell. Now, I don't know if I just got a faulty top cap and it's not creating a vacuum or if that's just inherent across the line. I don't know because Vapex only sent me one. I already touched on it a bit. The pods on this, way, way, way too dark. Vapex, you got to start watching reviews. We don't want dark pods. I like the mm -hmm. fact that you have those airflow reducers. However, they don't give you a spare screw. So if you lose one, you're SOL, baby. In the beginning, I told you about the funky mm -hmm. looks. Some peeps are just not going to like the looks. It's a very nitpicky con, but I got to point it out because of the unique shape and look of it. That type mm -hmm. C port location, it's right below where I get all the leakage from. I mean, come on, man. You don't put a type C charge port right below the airflow like that. It's just stupid. I mean, it's just a ridiculous location. It should have never been put there. And the last con is going to be, even with the MTL coil, even with the airflow shut down all the way, mm. this is not a legit MTL setup in my opinion. I would have liked to have seen more range on the airflow. It's more like a restrictive DL. So that's it on the cons. Let's move on to the pros, because it's got just as many pros, if not more. First pro is going to be, I love the shape. I'm digging the form factor. It almost feels like when you uh, fire it with your finger, that it's like a trigger style. I kind of like that. I'm digging the form factor big time. It takes a 21700 battery. It comes with a battery, and it's a pod system. What's not to like about that? It's all pros, baby. I like the airflow on this thing. It's well designed because of the way that you could, like, I know a lot of people have said that, you know, you can shut one side down, the side that's on the inside of your hand, and then you could open the other one all the way up. But to be honest with you, I've been holding it low, and I have no problem running both airflows. I just like the design of it. I like the placement. I like the reducers. I think they did a nice job with the airflow. It's nice and smooth. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is about halfway open. You can hear the smoothness, right? Now, if I click those things up and open it all the way up on both sides, right? And by the way, I like the design of that little piece that flips up to adjust it. That's a nice job as well. Listen. I mean, super, super smooth, wide open. Just really, really nice. I like the way they incorporated that button in order to open the top cap and release the pod. It's like a two-in-one button. Push it one way, it releases the cap. Push it the other way, it releases the pod. It's very innovative. I don't know how good that top cap does as far as sealing it. I think it's an issue, but it's definitely innovative. I got to give them props for that. This thing, even with a 21700 battery installed, extremely lightweight. I love it. So far, man, the coils, the coils have been on point. I'm getting great flavor. Let me show you the big coil, 75 watts. Check it out. Very nice, full-on flavor. When I cut the airflow down, let me do it right now, about halfway, I definitely get thicker clouds and better flavor. Same wattage, 75 watts. Watch. Flavor definitely intensifies. Really, really nice flavor. Fully saturated. I like running it best with the airflow half open. I got to give them credit. The fire button, nice and clicky. Up and down button, nice and clicky. Buttons are good all around. I like the capacity. I like the screen. It's a nice, crisp color screen that you can see in all lighting conditions. No issues with it. Let's get into our five star rating system. First category is going to be the looks. I already told you, I really dig it. I like the funky look. I know not everybody will. I think it's a really good looking, interestingly shaped pod. I've definitely been digging it. That's for sure. It comes in gray, black, and red, so it's got a nice color choice there. In the looks category, I'm going to score it a full point above average. We'll give it a three and a half. As far as coil performance goes, I've tried both coils that come in the kit. I already told you I like the bigger one better. I wish 
I didn't have the leaking issue that I have. I don't know if it's actually a coil problem or if it's a problem with the top cap. I think it's a problem with the top cap, but as far as pure performance goes with the flavor on the coils, it's definitely on point. It's a nice coil system. Again, I'm gonna put it a full point above average at three and a half stars. As far as the airflow category goes, I already covered that. I like that they included restrictors. I like those little pop-up things for adjustment right there. I think it's very well thought out. I think it's very well designed. It's also very smooth as well. So I'm gonna give them four stars on the airflow, even though I do wish they would have included another screw for the restrictors, just a spare one in case. As far as the value goes, I haven't seen a big disparity in it. I've been seeing this right around $55. <sighs> Definitely on the high side for a pod. However, you do have to take into consideration that you do get a 21700 battery with it. There's definitely some value there, no doubt about it. You also get two pods with two coils, so there's some value in that as well. It's not a terrible price. It's not a great price. I would put it right at average at around two and a half stars. We're gonna take all these stars, we're gonna add them all up, and we're gonna come up with a total star count of 13.5 stars, 13 and a half stars. We're gonna take those 13 and a half stars, we're gonna divide them by four, and we're gonna come up with an average star count of 3.375, which puts this thing about three quarters of a point over average. Not a bad effort by Vapex. It's not something I'd run out and go buy. It's not something I'd stay away from either. It definitely has its attributes as far as the flavor and the clouds and coming with a 21700 battery. If this is the type of styling you like, definitely go check it out. You do get better battery life than most pods because of the 21700 cell. Let's get into some of the specs on the Vapex Geyser AIO Pod Kit. It measures in at 87.7 by 30.9 by 53.5 millimeters. It has a 100 watt maximum and it comes with a single 21700 cell. It has a 6.5 ml capacity and it will fire down to 0.1 ohms. Two pods are included in the kit as well as two coils. You get a 0.23 ohm single mesh coil, good for 35 to 45 watts, and you get a 0.23 ohm single mesh coil, good for 55 to 75 watts. It is available in black, gray, and red. I don't know if you noticed, insiders, but I'm wearing a different uniform. That's right. I'm wearing the official Vaping Insider Rally shirt. We're going to be at the rally this week, this Saturday. I'm hoping to see you there. We all got to fight for a right to vape. Make your plans, show up at the Ellipse in Washington, D.C., and make sure you come over and say hi. Also, don't forget to head on over to our Vaping Insider community on Facebook. It's a great community. The people there are very knowledgeable. They're very friendly, very newbie friendly. The feed is very active there. I'm there 24-7. I'd love to see you there as well. And that's it, insiders. That's all I got for you guys today. You keep living that vape life. We're out of here. Deuces.